In our third example of circular motion in Newton's second law, we have an interesting contraption here. We have a pendulum, but instead of having the pendulum to swing back and forth, we're having it go ahead and revolve in circles like that. And so the length of the pendulum is two meters, the radius of the circular motion is one meter, and let's say that the tangential velocity of that motion is four meters per second. What is the tension in that string? So to do that, we have to take a look at the mass right here. Now, I have to put in a mass. And so the mass, let's say, is equal to uh, four. I used four already. Uh, let's just say uh, two kilograms. All right, well, good enough. Two kilograms. So what are all the forces acting on that mass? Well, for one, we have the force of gravity, which is pulling it straight down. There we go. Let's call that mg. And then we can think of the fictitious centrifugal force, which appears to be pushing it to the outside. And of course, this is in the wrong place. So let me go ahead and write it like this. Mass equals two kilograms, like that. Okay, so we have this fictitious centrifugal force which appears to be pushing to the outside caused by the circular motion, so we call that F sub C. We'll put in parentheses because we know that's not a real force, it's simply a fictitious force. And of course, we know that this can be said to be equal to mv squared over r. Right? So now when we add these two forces together vectorially, like so, we'll get Hmm, I want this to be a little bit straighter like that, so let me make this one a little bit longer so you can see visually what this is supposed to look like. Okay, so let's make this a little bit longer like so. This is our mg, and you'll see in just a moment why I made that change. All right, come down this way, so you can see that this here is our total force acting on this object, the weight and the centrifugal force. And of course, that has to be then balanced by the tension in the string, which pulls in the opposite direction. So then here we have the tension in the string, T, and so this tension is equal to the sum of these two forces combined, the vectorial sum. Which means that we have to find out what this is. Let's call this the resultant force, F sub R, like that. And to find the magnitude of that, I simply say this is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components that make up that force, which is the m, mg and the mv squared over r. So we have to square this, and we have to square that component, and that gives us the magnitude of the resultant force. All right, let's plug in what these numbers are. First of all, we need to find out what the weight is. mg is equal to 2 kilograms times acceleration due to gravity. 9.8 meters per second square, which is equal to 19.6 newtons. All right, now for the centrifugal force, F sub C is equal to mv squared over r, which is equal to the mass, which is 2 kilograms, times the velocity, which is equal to, uh, we said 4 meters per second. We have to square that and divide the whole thing by the radius, which we said was one meter. There we go. That's 16 times 2, which is equal to 32 newtons. Well, I didn't quite get it right. I've made mg longer than the centrifugal force, but that doesn't matter. It's just a good reference here. All right. Now, what we have to do is find the resultant force. So this is equal to the square root of mg, that would be right here, 19.6 newtons, and we square that plus the mv squared over r, which is 32 newtons, and we square that. And so we have 19.6 squared plus 32 squared equals, take the square root, and we get 37.5. So 37.5 newtons, and that would be the resultant force of both the centrifugal force and the weight causes the resultant force of 37.5 newtons, which means the tension also has to be 37.5 newtons. There we go. And that's the answer. Now, of course, I didn't quite get the dimensions correct because if I really were to figure this out and realizing how big the centrifugal force was, how big the weight was, we probably get a different situation here, but let's just ignore that. This is just a good example to show how we would calculate the tension of the string if these numbers were correct.